Hello, we are interviewing today Safin Desai, head of the Kurdistan Regional Government's Department of Foreign Relations. Minister Desai, welcome to Washington. Thank you. This is your second trip here and as head of the Kurdistan Regional Government's Department of Foreign Relations and your first visit during the Biden administration. How has this trip been different from your previous visits and would you say they're more the same or more different? Well, thank you very much. Uh, different, definitely. Um, the first visit was uh, not long after the formation of the current government in November 2019. At that time, it was a different administration and circumstances were different and issues on the table were different. Um, currently, um, there's a new administration, um, some new faces for sure. Um, I would say the strategy uh, more or less is the same, but it's the um, approach uh, and, and the personal touch of the individuals on the case. And let's not forget uh, the gap that was there during the pandemic that also affected this, uh, our extending out to the outside world. Uh, so this visit, I think it was very important. Um, and at the same time, uh, we have to also accept the fact that uh, a lot of uh, water has gone under the bridge uh, and uh, maybe priorities have changed, uh, such as the Ukraine and Russian conflict, um, China and many other issues that uh, is a priority for the United States. However, the uh, Middle East still remains to be important for the United States and uh, Iraq and Kurdistan are equally important. You had a number of meetings at the State Department. You had many meetings, in fact. How did they go? I must say um, uh, they all went extremely well. Um, there is still a great deal of sympathy and support. Uh, I must also say uh, they may be uh, somewhat uh, not necessarily disappointed, but uh, at least they, they tend to um, tell us very openly and clearly that we should do more in terms of uh, certain reforms, particularly in the Ministry of Peshmerga Affairs, and uh, our grievances within the country um, politically and uh, relations between Erbil and Baghdad. They are very supportive of that, that these issues should be um, resolved uh, and, and efforts to uh, come to an amicable end and solution uh, very quickly. Your relations with Baghdad under the current government, the Sudani government, are much better than they were previously. Did they, the administration acknowledge that? Thank you for that, appreciate that? Uh, very much so. Um, I think uh, the political climate between Erbil and Baghdad, and particularly uh, with uh, Prime Minister Sudani, is extremely good. Uh, we are very happy with this uh, relation between Erbil and Baghdad uh, with Prime Minister Sudani, and uh, it's been acknowledged by Washington and by other uh, Western friends. However, um, uh, it's the relation with the Prime Minister, but not necessarily with Baghdad as a whole. I see. So you're trying to expand that beyond him, but right now it's more with the Prime Minister. Indeed. Indeed. And you had a lot of meetings on Capitol Hill. How did they go? Uh, we met some old friends. Uh, they are always as supportive as they could be. Um, the Kurdish caucus and uh, some new uh, friends, some new faces. Uh, who may be very new uh, on the case. However, w as much as we could, briefly we informed them about the situation and uh, there is sympathy and there is support. Uh, I believe in general in all of our meetings on the Hill at the, and, and the State Department and the White House uh, went extremely well. Uh, much of the work has to be done by ourselves for sure, uh, but uh, we believe there is support and there is sympathy and uh, they, they what they defined or what we felt that they still see us as a, a strategic friend and ally in the region. There has long been bipartisan support in Congress for the Kurdistan regional government and that's what you experienced on this trip? Yes, indeed, um, and especially from uh, some key people uh, that, that was uh, very clear and, and, and uh, it was felt in that way, yes. And you were at the White House too? Yes, uh, we uh, had a meeting uh, and uh, that was perhaps more detailed, uh, more clear. Um, we put our case and our grievances and uh, how we should go about in addressing some of those issues and we felt that um, they are supportive of the um, 
ideas or the uh, issues that we, we, we are trying to uh, fix some of those issues, uh, both internally in Kurdistan and also at Real Baghdad. And um, that's what I wanted to ask you about. The, the United States wants to see good ties between the two major Kurdish parties to have elections held uh, in a timely fashion. And, and that's pretty much arranged now, isn't it? Election is a must. Um, in, under the most difficult circumstances back in 1992 when the uprising had just started uh, and we were very new in this, uh, let's say, uh, process, uh, we had our first election uh, and it went extremely well at that time. Uh, so um, backtracking on that, uh, it is not in anybody's interest. We believe in democracy, we believe in the same values and principles of our Western friends and the United States. Therefore, election is a must. It's an important part of the democratic process. And we have asked and uh, seek support from all of our friends that they should help us to proceed with this uh, electoral uh, uh, process. Uh, which ha seems to have uh, faced certain legal issues and technical issues. Um, the idea is uh, that uh, the presidency of Kurdistan uh, should address uh, or um, call upon the um, Iraqi Electoral Commission uh, for them to uh, help us to conduct the election. Uh, there is a communication between both sides. Apparently, uh, they have set some dates for early 2024. Um, hopefully, it can take place earlier than that. But if not, at least uh, it, it should be uh, starting at earnest at that uh, particular time, early 2024. Well, that would certainly be a positive development. Mm -hmm. Another important issue deals with the oil and budget. Um, how, wh what is the status of that and what is the U.S. position on that? Uh, the oil uh, that has been produced and exported uh, from Kurdistan via Turkey, obviously it has been uh, interrupted and has ceased for the export since 25th of March uh, this year and it has cost Kurdistan and Iraq a great deal. Uh, over three billion dollars have been lost. Um, as part of the budget law that has been passed in the Iraqi federal parliament recently, it obliges uh, KRG to produce 400,000 and export it or uh, the mechanism to export it through SOMO or through whatever mechanism, but now uh, there is no export. That means uh, the obligation is there, but we cannot deliver. And the uh, problem is not with KRG. It's an issue between Turkey and Iraq. Therefore, uh, Washington is very much supportive of the idea that this issue should be settled as soon as possible and the resumption of uh, export of oil should take place as soon as possible. There are negotiations between Erbil and Baghdad, and we hope that there will be serious negotiation between Baghdad and Ankara in order uh, to come to a solution where the uh, export can resume as soon as possible. Uh, budget, yes, budget law has been passed, but in terms of implementation, it has not taken place yet. Uh, the budget law is for three years. Hopefully, this will bring some economical stability to all of Iraq. Uh, but in terms of uh, the fair share of Kurdistan, uh, it has not been implemented, so we are already in arrears of paying uh, IOCs, we are already in arrears of paying our civil servants, therefore the communication between Erbil and Baghdad is ongoing, we have a delegation in Baghdad in order to uh, have a breakthrough and at least certain uh, obligations, financial obligations uh, towards Kurdistan should be met as a result of the, uh, the um, lack of export of oil. So this stalemate has put economic pressure on the Kurdistan region, is that? Unfortunately, it? yes. It, it is uh, beginning to uh, have an effect, uh, but uh, we are optimistic that the negotiations uh, will uh, find a way out of this uh, deadlock. Well, hopefully, hopefully it will work out. Also, the head of the Chaldean Church, Cardinal Sacco, was recently subject to some abuse and mistreatment in Baghdad and he's gone to Erbil. Religious tolerance is very important to the United States and the Kurdistan regional government has consistently demonstrated its commitment to religious tolerance. Was that an issue here on your trip? Did, did the US, have, uh, po US officials have positive words for that? Um, I think we're proud of what we have in Kurdistan and it's not uh, just uh, very recent or you know, as a result of uh, certain laws that has been passed. It's a conviction of uh, individuals deep down that they have lived together with various creeds and colors and faiths in the past for millennia. Therefore, 
Uh, we are proud of the coexistence of different communities together. And as you uh, very well know, uh, during the ISIS onslaught uh, in 2014, we accommodated two million people uh, from Iraq and from Syria, IDPs and refugees. Uh, it increased our population by 30% in a matter of six months and at a cost of $1.4 billion annually to KRG to maintain and to, uh, for the upkeep of these IDPs and refugees. So uh, it, is, it was a burden, but it, uh, it, we did that with uh, uh, pride. And we still believe that Kurdistan is a haven for all of those who want to live in peace uh, and, and uh, in a co peaceful coexistence. Unfortunately, what happened with uh, Cardinal Sacco, uh, it was totally unnecessary. Uh, he is in Erbil, he is welcome, uh, we <coughs> consider him to be in his own home, Erbil is his home, he actually uh, was born in Zakho, so uh, Kurdistan is his home. Uh, so uh, this issue, yes, uh, in some of the meetings uh, the concerns were raised uh, and it was highly appreciated that uh, Kurdistan has welcomed him and particularly at the State Department, uh, the relevant authorities in the State Department, uh, the issues of communities, uh, other components uh, was also uh, deeply discussed, particularly with the Yazidis and the Christians. Well, that is very good to hear. And it's also a remarkable statement about the, the caring quality of the Kurdistan regional government towards those in need. Is there anything else we should be discussing or have we covered all the major issues? I think we've covered all of them, uh, but what I felt, uh, to be honest, um, uh, this uh, interaction is important. Uh, my last visit was 2019, and uh, as I said, the pandemic had an effect uh, in the disruption of this communication. Uh, a month ago, uh, the Minister of Interior, uh, His Excellency Rebar Ahmed, uh, was here. Uh, I'm here now and I hope that uh, it will not be too long when we will have other delegations coming in uh, at various levels. By the same token, we would like to see uh, delegations from USA to visit us. Recently we have a Chamber of Commerce, not long ago we have uh, Secretary of uh, Defense and Assistant Secretary of State. So uh, we are happy and uh, we want to um, continue and maintain this traffic. Well, that sounds very good. Thank you very much for uh, sitting down with us and discussing all these important issues. Thank you.